Okay, continuing onward with our Boulder game, we've got some uh, sprite kit actions to talk about. But uh, real fast, I did uh, forget to do one little thing. I wanted to set up an uh, integer variable for the speed. And keep in mind that an integer is uh, just defined here. Variable type, variable type wise as an int. You don't have to do the pointer after it. And uh, it's uh, it's a whole number, so versus a float, which can be a decimal number. This is just uh, whole numbers here. And now let's uh, now that we've declared that, we can go over here to our scene file. We can put in here the very beginning speed equals twenty, and then I want to take that speed value and go down to where we are enumerating through the chill the boulders and uh, moving them around. And I want to put this in here for uh, the. 20 okay that's, that's what we made it equal to so replace that one and that one and then I'm also just gonna tie in this uh, value to the speed as well and uh, if we want to keep that at 5 what we could do is just multiply this times 0 0.25 so speed times 0 0.25 is gonna be 5 or 20 times 0 0.25 is going to be 5. Okay, so uh, that should uh, be fine and uh, good to go. And now let's talk about those actions. All right, I'm going to come right back up to the very top of our uh, scene again. And I'm going to put in here another method. I'll just crowbar it right in here and uh, call this uh, self set up actions. And as I was kind of working through this on my own, I, I eventually thought it was much easier to um, just put all this stuff into one single method and uh, worry about it there. Otherwise, it was just kind of adding a lot of code um, where there was already some other code and I just didn't feel like that was clean enough. So just keep in mind that you don't have to do this, but uh, you can create your own uh, method for your actions. And now, let me kind of explain what, what's going to happen here. We've got um, two different actions that we're going to apply to the character at the same time. All right, the first one is going to handle uh, the appearance of the character, and that's just going to cycle through the the textures that we created, those ones that that were in our character atlas. Right, this guy right here, remember? And that's primarily what that action is going to do. It's it's going to cycle for the, through the first three frames. It's going to wait for a moment, and waiting in itself is an action. And uh, then it's going to go back through the previous frames. So it's going to go to the first one, second one, third one, then the second and first one again. And then eventually what we're going to do is we're going to set the texture back to being the, uh, the base of the character. That's all going to be one complete action. And then we're going to have a separate action that we're going to use for uh, moving the character up and down. All right, so. Uh, but they're both going to get called at the same time, but they do different things. And what I'm going to do is come over here to my scene file, and I'm going to declare these actions. Call this one jump movement. And this is going to be jump animation. And I'm declaring them so that every method can possibly um, make use of them. Uh, what I found in testing this is I don't think I need to make them a property and retain them, and I don't think that I need to uh, synthesize them. If you're familiar with those terms, more power to you. But um, I think for right now, we can just get away with um, treating these in the same way that we treated our, our bool and our int variable, where this is all we need to do. And, um, they'll be accessible to us through uh, multiple methods inside of here. And uh, now let's go back to our setup actions and uh, we can just basically run through these and then we'll I'll show you how those uh, that jump movement and jump animation action get used at the very end of this. So SK texture atlas is gonna be the first thing that we need to set up here. This is of course not actually an action but uh, this is just a reference to our Texture Atlas, which is this guy right here. So we just write SK Texture Atlas equals SK Texture Atlas, and this is going to be Atlas named. And then we just repeat back the name in here. We don't actually have to put um, dot Atlas at the end of it. I'll put that note. Don't put dot Atlas in there. OK. 
Okay, so you just write character, and maybe we've overused that uh, that word character in this. Uh, then we're going to use. Then we're going to create an SK texture. Okay, out of one of those items inside of the texture atlas, and this is um, incredibly easy. We can just call this uh, text. Well, let's make it a little bit more specific. Let's call this jump text one, and this will equal atlas texture named, and then you just use the base name. And this time we do need to put .png. We just use the base name, or I should say the um, standard definition name of the file. So what we don't need to do is put in here at 2x.png. All right, that's going to be um, taken care of for us. And you know what? Um, what did I? My notes are a little bit different here. All right, so this is character jump one. I'm sorry. So character jump one is the uh, the name of that first texture. And then let's just go ahead and copy the, this line out two more times. that change that change that okay and now what we're going to do is create an ns array which is going to hold on to these atlas textures and an array is basically a variable that can hold other variables it's about as simple as i can put it and uh, I'm going to just throw them in here right like this. Jump text 1, jump text 2, and finally jump text 3. And um, we'll end up using this NS array in uh, the action, uh, which is a specific action for just basically animating with textures. and what it wants from us is an array of textures all right so it'll cycle through those and let's get it going i guess so let's write in here sk action and let's call this uh, atlas animation this is going to equal sk action and uh, nice enough all of our uh, sk actions begin with sk action for the class name and then followed up by this sk action right here and the difference is then in how we uh, this line after it. It's, it's basically the the real crux of it, you know. Animate with textures, and then Atlas textures is what we want to put in there. And you can see it's uh, auto suggesting me time per frame. And for this, we're just going to do 0 0.1. And a lot of times, what you'll see in um, for anything that's animated is you do like one point. 0 divided by 60.0. Sometimes you see people use the F after that, which I guess just further specifies it's a float. You don't really need to. Um, so this will be kind of setting the time per, per frame at virtually like as quick as possible. Like realistically, that's what you do. Uh, but I'm going to I'm gonna make a, each frame last just a little bit longer. I don't feel like it needs to go by that quick. All right, so I'm just using 0 0.1, which is 1 tenth of a sec second. And uh, the only war warning I should be getting here is that this is an unused variable. I expect to see that after every one of our SK actions until we uh, until we start using them. And then um, let's put. Well, you know what? Let's do this. We can. Let's go ahead and start testing a little bit more frequently. And well, we'll do. Yeah, let's go ahead and put in one more here. SK action. This will be wait. Again, some of the time I forget where I like that little pointer to be at. <laughs> okay, so again, SK action, wait for duration, and let's make this uh, one point. Uh, well, I'll make it zero point five. All right, now I'm going to use my jump animation action that I already set up over here. Okay, so this is kind of like no different than if I had done this. If I had said, if I would written that line right there and then decided to go in and start writing SK action sequence, and then you put in here the, um, the actions that you want to run in sequence, which is just going to be our atlas animation and wait. Alright. 
but obviously I don't need to do this because I've already done it back here. So what this should be telling me is that lo local declaration of jump animation hides instance variable. And what that's saying is basically uh, you've already done that. You've already created this instance variable. So why are you trying to do that again with the same name? All right. So let's take that off of there. Okay, that should turn green because it kind of recognizes that that's a instance variable that you've already set up. And now what we could do is go ahead and run this uh, action on the uh, the character. And to do that correctly, as I just found out, uh, I needed to reorder where this line occurs. I need to actually put it after I create the character. Otherwise, setting up my actions and trying to run it right away uh, would not be good. And um, this is, of course, just us testing right now. Um, later on, the uh, the action will get run, of course, only after you touch the screen. But uh, just for right now, while we're testing, we want to do this. And uh, we can go probably steal a line. Uh, let's just grab this line. And you know what? I'll go ahead and just make sure that that's a cast as a SK sprite node. So then we just write so node run action, and there's our jump animation. And uh, come to think of it, this might run so quick we don't even really see it right away. Let's um let's do this. Let's change our uh, our weight for duration to 2.5, and then we'll just reverse the sequence here. So what'll happen is it'll wait first, and then it will do the um, atlas animation. And well, regardless, it's going to leave us with this third frame anyway. So we would know if it if it was successful. All right, but um, just quick review before we do this. So this jump action is now a uh, SK action that contains a sequence, wait, then Atlas animation, and ultimately we, we use this by just taking our node and writing run action, jump animation, and it's going to do everything that uh, was set up there for us. And sure enough, it Oddly enough, it uh, did it right when the uh, the boulder passed by him. I still have that uh, that NS log statement for the past uh, video on casting. Let me just go ahead and get that out of there. Don't need that. Okay. Now what we need to do is make it so that we run back through the frames and end up on our base texture. So let me uh, just reverse this back again. So we'll just uh, we're gonna wait for 0 0.5, and then let's set up another atlas animation that is gonna just contain the uh, the frames to go back. So I'm gonna copy this line of code. I'm gonna call this uh, atlas animation two, and then uh, animate with uh, textures. This is gonna be atlas textures two. And since we end up, since our jump pauses on that third frame here, we just need to step back down to this one and this one. So we just need jump text two and then jump text one. And we don't need that third one. Okay, so Atlas Texture 2 is in there. I should probably say textures, plural. And we're just getting a warning here that says that we haven't used this guy yet. And we will use this after that one. And then finally, I want to set up a, um, an SK action to just set the texture back. And we'll just call this um, reset texture equals And um, since I haven't previously set up just a, a solo texture with my, um, my, my character base file, this one uh, right here, I can do that inside of um, this method. And that's pretty simple. All I need to do is put in these brackets, sk texture, texture with 
image named. Be sure you have that image named in there, not just image. And then character. It's going to get cut off a little bit. Sorry. Oh, just deal with it. Character base dot png. And then let's see. Now you can see it all. Should be good to go. Come on. Can I get it all in? I guess not. Well, I can just make that go away. All right, so now, now you've got it, and this warning should just be the unused variable texture. All right, so we're going to go and uh, put that right down over there, reset texture. And now we're going through this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, you could also put in here, I haven't actually tried it, but <laughs> pretty sure you can put in a, a duplicate of uh, the same action twice. I don't see why not. All right, so uh, let's give that a shot. And actually, before we test, let's go ahead and take this same line right here and just put that down into our touches began statement. And this way we can um, publish this and uh, click down a few times and see that jump animation. And if you guys noticed a slight little edit there, it's because uh, there was an edit there, and I'll explain why in a moment. So anyway, here's our character jumping forward. He is uh, not getting off the ground, but we're going to fix that in just a moment. And... I spent about two hours, <laughs> yeah, two hours, trying to figure out why the texture was jumping around inside of uh, this little guy here. It was getting big, and then it would end small. And um, you know, I, well, <laughs> let's just put it this way: I think there's a bug, and a lot of other people <laughs> in the developer forums think there's a bug too when uh, the texture atlas decides to rotate the um, one of the images it uh, then begins to ignore the uh, the white space around it whereas it should have included that um, and uh, yeah so uh, that's what was going on and my solution to this which I mentioned at the end of the, the texture atlas's video was to uh, basically just put a, a, a an entire box around my texture okay so keep in mind the, the where the image is about this tall and around this, even though you're not seeing it, is a is a just a, a, a color set to about you know one percent transparent, so it's just barely in there, and um, that is at least locking in the image to to being exactly the size that it should be for every single one of these frames through here. And, you, and of course, you don't see any shift with the uh, the texture. I mean, he's lunging forward a little bit, but that's uh, that's intentional on my part. So that was the solution, and that was the solution of everybody else that I found in the uh, the developer forums that were saying, "Hey, guess what? There's a problem." Now, oddly enough, I didn't have this issue the the first time I tested when I first ran through this uh, the same exact f file, <laughs> just in a different project. And I guess for some reason, around uh, this time, it decided when it was going to create the character atlas that it was going to rotate one of the images uh, to optimize it even further. So. Who knows? All right. Uh, now, continuing onward, we uh, we just want to put in the the jump action, and uh, so we, right now we just have the jump animation, just the animated frames, and uh, now we can go ahead and do that, and uh, let's get started. Let's take out this because now that we already have our uh, our press down or our touches event taken care of, it we don't need it in there, and uh, let's go ahead and write sk action move up and this is going to equal of course sk action as usual and we're going to move by x all right oh actually i'm sorry our first parameter here is to move by x and on that one we're going to do nothing but on this one on the y we're going to move by 210 and for the duration i'm going to set this to 0. Or i should say 0. 0.3 and uh, that'll give us a quick bump up by 210 pixels on the y-axis so no matter where you're starting from you're just going to move up 210 pixels and then let's copy the same line by the way I should probably put in here um, create a second set of actions and uh, we're going to call this one move up two, and again we're going to only go up. Uh, not well, no, we're not going to go up any at all on the <laughs> x-axis because you would not normally go up on the x-axis. 
and we're going to go only go up by 40 this time on the Y. So this is kind of a, a, a cheap way of easing it out. All right. And uh, then our, for our next one, you guessed it, we're going to move down. And of course, I want to make sure that I move down by exactly the, the same amount that I moved up total. So that's going to be uh, 250. And of course, I need to put negative 250. And again, I can make this just uh, 0.3. So it'll kind of spend a bit longer going up, easing out, and then just kind of drop down a little bit more suddenly. And then uh, we've got SK action done equals SK action. This is one we haven't seen yet. Perform selector. So we are going to perform a method identified by this selector when we are done jumping and we just write the selector name in there jump done which of course we haven't written yet on target you just put self here okay because we're just the selector is going to be inside of this class we just write self and then we're going to take our jump movement remember that's what we set up over here jump movement and this is now going to equal our sk action sequence and again we put in here the at symbol do an opening bracket then we're just going to repeat back move up move up to move down done and two brackets we need to close that off and I think we should stop seeing warnings oh no we do need to actually put in this uh, that method right there and this is an easy one We'll write it out quick. We're just going to write void jump done. And hopefully, some of you have figured out why we might want to do this. Let's put a little ns log statement in here ns log jump finished. It's because we don't want any double jumps in there. If we were to press down twice, we could, uh, before the jumping was finished, we could keep moving this guy up, right? So uh, we should put in here a variable like is jumping equals no. Of course we do need to go ahead and set this up or declare it over here and I'll just be bool is jumping. So cut back over here. Uh, now it knows what we're talking about and of course what we need to do is set up a um, now an if statement to see if you can actually jump when uh, this is set to um, no. And here we go. Where are we? Where's our touches begin? All right. We're going to write if is, oops, all right, undo that. If is jumping equals no, don't forget we have to do two equal signs there. Then in that case, if you're not already jumping, then it's okay to run the code that we previously had. Of course, we want to put in here is jumping equals yes now. All right, so there's our kind of switch so that we can't uh, double click on this and, and do it twice. And then uh, we also need to put in here, you know what, let's change this so it's a character. Doesn't really matter, but matters to me, I guess. Uh, character, this time we will run action, and this will be jump movement. And uh, they are, uh, they're both getting run at the same time here, not one after the other. And uh, now I think we should be able to test this out and press down, press down again, it doesn't seem to be harming us to do that, I'm double clicking so he is jumping up and uh, yeah there we go alright I think that, that's about all I have time for in this video but we'll be back with uh, plenty more to come